Is this not the most ridiculous water bottle you ever did see in your life? <laughs> and before you ask, Rosie, have you lost your marbles and bought a Stanley Cup? No, I have not. <laughs> I was sent this the other day and it is just like ridiculously ginormous. So I've been using it in my studio because it's good that you can't like spill it really. So I wanted to film the next few days because I am so close to releasing my dress pattern. I've just got the last few things to do like uploading it onto the website and creating images to share about the dress and then I realised I don't really have that many images um, of the dress so I'm actually going to make another dress today and then take some more pictures of it either today or tomorrow, probably tomorrow because I don't think I'm going to finish it in one day. So it's super exciting. I'm just going to go through the notes I made when I was making the tutorial video um, because that was sort of like my final toile um, and then from that I've made a few changes to the pattern. Not huge changes, just like the placement of the Elastic has moved down a bit to allow more room for the bust. I'm pretty sure I made all of these changes, so let me just go and check. I've also had some people pattern testing for me, which has been new for me, but also so glad that I did a pattern testing stage because we've just found not so many bits, but like it's just so nice for me to not have to worry about putting the pattern out into the world and then people coming back and being like oh but this bit doesn't work this bit doesn't work um because that would be so stressful so i've had a really good group of girls testing out the dress and they are all different sizes so we've covered all of the different sizes so one of my pattern testers actually told me that you can print out the instruction book that um as two pages per a4 sheet so I'm going to try that now, just to save some paper. That actually worked really well, printing it two pages per page and double-sided. Use much less paper, but obviously if your eyesight is not great, <laughs> then I don't recommend doing that because it is quite small, but, but there we go. There's a little hack if you're wanting to save some paper on the printing. I mean, you don't even need to print out the instruction book, but you can just have it on your phone or computer when you're making the dress. So now we can get on with the exciting part of making the dress. First, I'm gonna load up another roll of film onto my camera. I love the way the film photos turn out when I take them, so I'm going to do another roll. Quite expensive to get film developed these days, but I found that I actually find this camera really easy to use to take self timer photos on so it's got this is my camera that I use to film camera it's a Canon AE1 I think yeah this is what it looks like and it's honestly the easiest film camera I've ever used apart from like the point and shoot ones but I always found that they ran out of batteries or they'd suddenly stop working and then you'd be like oh is my film finished in there or is it finished rolling on or so I like this one and it's obviously got the um, self timer mode on it which is super handy and I just put it on a tripod focus something in the area where I'm going to stand and then press go and go and stand there and it seems to have worked out fine so far but <laughs> Every time I load a film, I always find a YouTube video on how to load it, just because I'm worried I'm going to do it wrong. So that's what I'm watching now. But it's just the way it works. Be the top, film across. So, all the way across, we've got a little sprocket. We're going to swing that over, and come over here and just and advance a white dot. This is the Willa dress I made in the video tutorial. I love this fabric so much. It's a block printed polka dot. I believe I got it from the Cloth House in London on their website. So I will link it down below because they probably still got it. So yeah, this is the shape of the Willa dress. Um, but since making this, I've made a few changes to these channel seams here and I've lowered them a bit. So I'm gonna make up a dress today that has them 
lowered. It still fits and works well like this, but obviously I want it to be perfect. <laughs> and so I'm going to make up another one today. Here's the fabric I've chosen. It's this pinky beige seersucker cotton. It's got some tiny, it's got like a tiny little gingham print going on. So hopefully the willow dress will look good in this fabric. So I'm going to get on and cut it out and then catch up with you when I'm at a random making stage. <laughs> just remembered I was going to do the shorter version because I've now added a shorter length to the skirt. It's not that much shorter, but I think I'll do that. Okay, this is how far I got with the dress yesterday. Pretty much finished, I just have to hem it now. So it's looking good so far. I think I will do the facing for the hem. Um, for the shorter length, it doesn't come with the facing exactly at the right size, so you just need to cut it down slightly um, to be the right size. I'll show you how I do that. So, so you'll just need the original skirt pattern and then wherever you've shortened it to just place the facing on top matching up the centre front and then you're just going to want to trace off the excess it won't be that much is finished. Very cute. I'm just gonna try it on. Just tried the dress on to check the fit is all good. Looks like it is. Right now I'm gonna take all these layers off. <laughs> that looks a bit better having it on without my long sleeve. Hello fluffy bean. <laughs> Hello. We have a finished dress. Turn this little light on, that might be better. Ah. So this is the slightly shorter length on the pattern. I love this fabric. It's super soft. Very glad I picked that up in Copenhagen. I need to get rid of the last few threads and finish the ends of the ties. So I think what I'll do now is set up my backdrop somewhere to take pictures tomorrow. I might be able to take some today but I'm meeting a friend later to walk the hound. Hello. Yeah, that is my sewing done for the day. And now I'm gonna go and sit and edit some bits that I wanted to make changes on. I love the little sleeves, they're so cute. Super puffy. If you don't love super puffy sleeves then it's not for you, my friend. <laughs> now a few days after the launch of the Willa dress. I took a few days off just to relax because I got really in my head about releasing this pattern for some reason. <laughs> and I didn't even end up doing that much teasing of the pattern. I was like, you know what, it's done. Go. Here it is. <laughs> I did a little bit of teasing on my Instagram and then I just went for it and uploaded it all. Um, so yeah, it's been really nice seeing the response to it. I've had some really good feedback. So now I'm ready to move on to my next pattern. I think I'll probably do another bag. 
pattern because those go down very well and I love making little bags, they're very satisfying to make. Last night I was working on my hand quilting project and I need to cut out a load more things for that so I think I'm going to do that this morning. Just have a nice change of scenery from a dress pattern <laughs> and do some quilting. I've also got one of my new ceramic pieces back from the kiln which is this little pendant light. I bought the cable from Etsy and it came and it was a different size than I thought it would be originally so I had to then remake the ceramic lampshade because I had to get the hole to be the right size. Um, but now it works and it looks so cute in my studio. I've just got it suspended from the ceiling with a little hook. So I think it adds a really nice bit of interest because I don't have too much stuff on the walls around here because I can't put much up on the walls because we've got this special damp treatment so we can't put any holes in the wall. The only annoying thing about it is that you have to switch it on at the plug. Um, you can get it the wire and everything so that you can wire it into sockets and everything but I just got like a plug-in socket because I thought that would be really useful and I thought it would come with like a switch to switch it on and off but it doesn't so um so I just have to turn it on manually let's see mm. can't always have it on though because my eyeballs really hate filament lights like when you can see a light bulb like the full light bulb my eyes just can't stand it <laughs> But if I'm sat down here then I can't see the light bulb, I've just got the light, so it's good. So let me show you how far I've got with my quilting. Last night I was sewing a big batch of roses again, or flowers, um, ready to go in the next few rows. I've got quite a way to go still, I've, I'd say I'm about almost exactly halfway now. So this is what I've got connected and it is very satisfying once you get a full row completed so that's what I want to do today ideally but I've run out of the backing colour so I need to make some more of those so that's what I'm going to do today and then I think I'm just going to sit and sew I got some new fabric the other day on eBay these are vintage Laura Ashley curtains they're so pretty okay this is my little basket of hexagon quilting. These are also new fabrics. I managed to get some more of this Laura Ashley cotton and then I also got this one but turns out it doesn't actually go with these colours that I'm using so that will be saved for a different project. This is one of my old hexagon quilting projects that I just never really finished. <laughs> I couldn't decide what to do with it in the end. Um, my family called me Ro instead of Rosie. So, I made a little nickname banner. I don't really know what I'm, I'm going to do with this. I was thinking of maybe putting it on a cushion or a bag. I don't know, and I still don't know. But it can just stay in my little box for now. Right, this is the fabric I need to cut more out of today. I've just done some quick calculations to see how many more I need to cut out. And it's 113. So I've got a lot of cutting to get on with. I've just cut a little hexagon template out. Um, this time with two hexagons at a time, so I can just keep moving it down further each time. It just saves me some of the time. I know that some people, when they do hexagon quilting, they just cut squares out. And to be fair, I could do that. But I just feel like there'd be a lot of bulk at the back and I don't want there to be a lot of bulk at the back so I think I might as well just carry on as I am. It may take a little bit longer but I think it looks better in the long run.
think I'm going to end the video here for today because I need to take Flory outside because she is being a little monkey. And the sun is shining so I thought I might go and do some gardening and pot up my dahlias to give them a chance of actually growing this year. <laughs> so yeah, I think I'm going to go into the garden and do some gardening with Flory. You can run around like a crazy thing, get some energy out. I will link my pattern down below for the will address. Let me know if you have any questions about it or anything. Um, and yeah, I really hope you guys love it. And let me know if you want to see some more dress patterns this year. I hope you're all having a wonderful day and I will see you in my next video.